Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about a problem that I kind of brought on myself from a purchase that was uh, done recently. And uh, so I, I had I bought an extra radio, and now I have two radios and one antenna. What do you do? Stay tuned. That's right here, right now on Ham Radio for non techies. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5NPL, and I run the Ham Radio for non techies uh, YouTube channel here. So anyway, my dilemma. Well, I got, I wanted a new uh, HF radio, uh, and that's going to bring a whole, that's going to a whole, whole nother video for another time. But I ended up getting uh, an ICOM seventy three hundred. So that produced a conundrum for me because I only have one HF antenna, and I use my nine ninety one for certain things. I use my seventy one hundred for everything else, or seventy three hundred for everything else. Uh, so without further ado, let's go down to my shack. Get this thing started and I'll kind of explain what it is, the problem that I'm having and what I'm going to do. I'll see you downstairs. So welcome to my uh, radio shack here, guys, which was formerly known as my dining room. <laughs> uh, so a tale of two radios. What do you do when you have two radios but only one HF antenna? Uh, for a while there, I've been going back and forth, unplugging wires and moving stuff around to play with one radio versus the other, I got tired of it. So my solution has been, I went, I went and called up HRO the other day and talked to a guy up there and I said, here's my dilemma. I have one HF antenna. You know, you might be thinking, well, why don't you just get two HF antennas? Well, my DX commander is pretty killer. Why, why, why get something else? Uh, so I'm gonna use the, D, the DX commander for both radios, my 991 and my new 7300. But I want to be able to switch between the radios because I use the 991 now for FT8 and for my VHF, UHF stuff. And maybe on occasion I'll do a little HF with it. But the 7300 has become my primary HF radio, one, because that's all it does. And I like the features on it and the way it, the way it, uh, it works. Like I said, that's a whole other video that's coming out soon. Just stay tuned for that. But I needed a way to switch between the radios. I didn't want to buy two antenna tuners. Didn't want to buy, you know, another another uh, antenna and have to go through that whole mess. So my solution was to pick up a coax switch. And I've got it already marked for my 7300 over here. Neutral for just grounding everything and shutting it off. And the other side's for my 991 Alpha. So I think without hopefully blowing up three or $4,000 worth of equipment, uh, I think I can get this thing all set up and hooked up and ready to roll. And uh, I also found out that not all cables are created equal, as I'm sure some of you more experienced hams have figured out. I bought these on Amazon, and I think I recommended them to you guys a while back. And they're okay. All right, they're not they're not terrible. They, they do the job, but they're not as good as the cables that you can get that are you know like oh ABR Industries makes some really awesome cables, and they're right here in Houston. And it's funny because being in Houston, you think, oh, I just go on ABR's website, order these up and pick them up. And they'd be a, a great price. Uh, it was actually cheaper to buy these on HRO uh, than to buy them directly from ABR. And I've been up to ABR before. I talked to one of the girls up there that runs the whole thing. A great operation, excellent quality cables. But I wanted all the same cables. So I've got three of these that I picked up to hook into this unit and into the radios. So the next part's going to be hooking this all up. I think I've got it figured out, and I'll have one of these cables running out from the tuner into this thing, and these two will actually run into the, into the respective radios. So I'm going to get that all hooked up, and I'll show you what it looks like here in just a sec. All right, guys, so uh, after going through and hooking everything up like I told you I was going to, I gave it a test here. So here's what the back end looks like. I've got the three cables coming out of the switch one of which goes into the input or the transmit side of the uh, of the tuner. It goes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it, it, yeah, it goes. It goes from. Uh, sorry about that. I'm brain dead here. So it goes from the center connection to the uh, tuner right down here, and then I have the actual wire connecting to the uh, antenna through 
the window pass through we built a couple months ago. And then the right cable here goes to the 991 and the left cable goes to the 7300. And when testing it, the only thing I have to change out on here, there's two different uh, power cables. And I'll see if I can get them over here. So these are the power cables for the 991 to plug into the tuner. And then right next to that, on the uh, other end over here, I've got these uh, other ones that plug into the 7300. So there is one, there is still one step I've got to do to change between the two uh, tuners, or between the, between the two radios. So I did test it out, went on the same, same band on 20 meters, picked up everything, was able to tune everything, disconnected the power cables, went back and flipped my switch to the uh, other radio, put it on the same channel, picked up everything, so that was fantastic. So this does work. Uh, it wasn't entirely cheap. I think this uh, unit here was about 80 bucks, and the cables are about $24, $25 a pop. You know, and there are other um, coax switches out there if you're in a similar situation trying to find a solution for everything. But the Alpha Delta, that's it's a new company that I hadn't heard, or I haven't tried anything from. I've heard nothing but good things about them. And you know, this thing here, this unit is solid metal, really nice. It's also got, I forgot to even mention this before, it also comes with lightning protection. So there's a lightning protection plug here. And if you set this thing on that, it kills off the signal to both these. And everything just runs through the ground. Now it has to be properly grounded through this little uh, attachment right here, which I have not done yet. But for the purposes of this video, I just wanted to show you that my theory did work and that this, this was a solution for uh, keeping this thing working and rocking and rolling for me. All right, so I want to do a little wrap up here. Um... So you basically saw what I did. I hooked it up. I had a, I had a solution for the problem I was I was having to deal with. And uh, as I was saying in the video downstairs, there are other cheaper versions of the same kind of a switch. Uh, but since I hadn't tried anything from Alpha Delta yet, they're still a brand new company to me. Uh, I want to try one of the products. You know, I've heard other people mention their lightning arresters are really cool, this and that. And uh, yeah, so I, I I set it all up. It seems to work just fine. So if you're in a similar situation where you have, you know, two radios, only one antenna, and you don't want to, you know, either spend the time buying another antenna, building it, throwing it up in the backyard, or whatever you got going on, if you need, if you need a simple solution, I think this is the way to do it. Um, and like I said, in order for the lightning arrestor and everything to work properly, you need to have it properly grounded, have the proper wires on there to ground it to your to your station, and uh, have it all working out. But uh, I think this is a viable solution for me, and I'm pretty happy with the results. And uh, you know, time will tell. I mean, I'm gonna—I I still have to go get the the ribbon, uh, the the copper ribbon stuff to do the grounding and everything. But I'll eventually have that all set up and ready to roll. And maybe I'll come back and add that in as part of a. Oh yeah, by the way, here's what happened in this video. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, guys, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, I got a couple more videos I got to get shot and including that 991 versus the uh, 7300 and what I do and don't like about each. And uh, we'll see where that goes, but that'll be uh, a later on down the road. Anyway, guys, if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Click the little bell. Be notified when I put out new videos. And I try to get new stuff out on a weekly basis, at least once or twice a week. And maybe eventually someday I'll uh, do a live. People keep asking me, are you going to do a live? Are you going to do a live? like... I don't have enough to talk about to do a live right now. If I do a live, I have to collaborate with somebody else that is already kind of well-known, maybe have us do a bounce back or something like that. But for me to sit here and do a live for an hour or two, I don't know what I'd say to you guys that wouldn't bore the living crap out of you. So, anywho, we'll figure it all out. Anyway, guys, this is Ham Raider for Non-Techies. Have a great day. Have a great week. And we are clear.